Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host, Gary LaRue, and special guest, Ted Heil, president of Mini Circuits. Welcome, Ted. Hi, Pat. Hi, Gary. Thanks for having me on again. This is a special episode covering IMS 2020, so we wanted to learn more about some of the highlights that you're having at that event. With IMS going virtual, uh, how did Mini Circuits prepare for the event and displaying your products online? Uh, it's kind of interesting, actually, Pat. Uh, for us, this is the first time we're doing anything like this. Uh, our marketing team has been scrambling, scrambling, working with the guys at IMS and the GTR to pull together what we hope will be uh, something interesting for the viewers. Uh, we've taken a little different tact. What we try to do is to create a little bit of a look and feel of being at the booth. We actually set up our booth in our facility in Brooklyn. And last week we had a videographer come by and, and I walked, walked the viewer through the booth looking at the various uh, uh, displays and giving them an update on what the products are, uh, what, the, what the interesting new products that we talked about that we released over the last year. Uh, and then we hope this will give them a sense of what it's going to be like to walk through a booth uh, with an applications engineer. Hopefully, if they're interested, they'll click, and then they'll have the opportunity to talk to one of our applications engineers who will be ready for them to answer their questions and give them more detail. That sounds like a really good approach. Uh, talk a little bit more about some of the products that you're actually going to be highlighting at the virtual booth. Sure. For us, 2019 and, and even into the first half of 2020 was a really successful year for us in terms of new product releases. Uh, over those 12 months, we released close to about 400 new products, which uh, is, is pretty much record pace for, for many circuits. Uh, a lot of the interesting area falls into some of our, our key investment product lines. Let's talk about the LTCC products. That's one of our most spoken about and, and prolific product lines. Uh, we've made some really nice uh, investments and advancements over the last year. We've taken our traditional products that uh, I think we have probably one of the broadest product lines in low temperature co-fired ceramic filters, and we've redesigned a lot of the kernel frequencies, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 megahertz. We've made them smaller. We went from 0805 or 12 or 6, 0805 down to 0603, 0402, and we even have 0202 size now as our smallest filter. We've not only been able to reduce the size, but through our modeling and and understanding the dielectric properties a little better, we've actually gotten sharper filters. So we're offering the customers in LTCC better filters in smaller size. Um, we've also introduced our first millimeter wave filters. These are surface mount LTCC. So unlike traditional thin film, these are, the conductors are buried in the multiple layers of ceramics so we can make pretty small packages. Up to now, we'll, we're about to release our 28 and 30 gigahertz LTCC bandpass filters. And one of the traditional problems in LTCC is getting good rejection far out in frequency. What happens is this is, a, this is a chip component on a board, and you have a lot of leakage signals that will either go around or through the ceramic. We have created a shielding effect within the, the, the LTCC chip so that we can now achieve close to 60 dB of rejection all the way through 12 gigahertz. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty novel. On the Mimic amplifier front, we finally released our models that are into KA band, several amplifiers up to 45 gigahertz. We're announcing at the show another five to six models, distributed amplifiers up to 50 gigahertz, expanding that product line. Uh, obviously, a lot of opportunity for 5G, uh, as well as the aerospace and defense markets. We released a lot of products, Mimic products, uh, that are passive as well. Uh, these are a series of power splitters and couplers and and equalizers, we push that product line up to 60 gigahertz. Those are offered in both die and package format. We, uh, I don't know if most people probably don't know, but many circuits, we package our own semiconductors. We have 150,000 square foot of floor space in Malaysia, and we have our, our, our packaging engineering team is there. So we're using plastic QFNs, we're designing our own QFN packages. Now we're releasing air, we're getting ready to release air cavities up into the millimeter wave. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other products that we'll be talking about the booth. It's almost too much to talk about now. You'll get a glimpse of it during the show. 
You mentioned your investment in LTCC. Are there other strategic areas you've invested in products to realize new ones? Yeah, it's, it's a good point, Pat. Um, you know, we've been fortunate to come off the back of uh, uh, several years of really good growth. We're privately held business and, and we look at what we do with our cash. We have taken that and we've reinvested it in the business. A couple of key areas for us over the last 12 months is we've just opened a design facility in Rhode Island. These are a group of seven engineers who specialize in high power design, whether it's LD Moss or gallium nitride. They are taking responsibility for our, for our high power amplifier product line. Traditionally, that line for us has capped out at about 100 watts, but there's clearly a market in the higher powers uh, up to about 8 gigahertz. So the team there will be pushing us into the kilowatt region uh, for benchtop, typically test amplifiers. Uh, but we've also taken a, a, a stab at entering the energy market. These are tend to be more narrow band for heating and medical and other industrial applications. Those first products are in trials right now. We hope to, to be able to see some success by the end of the year. We've made another big investment locally at our facility on Long Island. Uh, we were able to acquire some strong technical talent and we're opening up a clean room facility there so that we can drive our chip and wire assemblies for either the high rail markets or the millimeter wave modules. These are active and passive modules, a lot of amplifiers, pushing us into 67 and 80 gigahertz. There's a lot of test applications, 5G, 6G, research that require these connectorized products, and, and we hope that our Deer Park group will be able to fill that. We've got another few other investments, non-technical, but this year we released, uh, or we just announced our partnership with Mauser. Uh, traditionally, many circuits, we have distributed all of our products directly in the domestic US and North American markets. A few months ago, we launched our first third party distributor, Mauser, for the domestic US market, uh, and it's been a great success. It's a big change for many circuits, uh, but it's really all about servicing our customers and aligning with their preferences, particularly when it comes to picking parts and getting them for the prototype. And Mauser has been great with that. We've also invested in Asia. We opened up a uh, logistics facility in our Penang, Malaysia site so that we can now service our Asian customers direct without wrapping products all over the globe multiple times and, and uh, in dealing with all the freight. Well, this has been quite a year so far and the roller coaster ride isn't over yet. What are your thoughts, Ted, on the market trends and the state of the RF microwave industry? Well, um, I think most of us in our business are coming off of, of a pretty good first half uh, of the year from what I see from all the announcements uh, and many circuits is no different. Uh, a lot of us have big questions for what's going to happen in the second half of the year uh, and 2021. Fortunately for us, we're a very multi-market company. We track over seven markets where our products are sold. We have over 25,000 customers and, and no one customer represents more than 3% of our business. That gives us a sense of safety for whatever may happen in the back half of this year and 2021. We know some markets that affect us are the aerospace industry in particular. Uh, we don't see, we see a precipitous drop in the second half, uh, and we think that's gonna stay at a depressed level for the next couple of years. So that affects our UHF, VHF, comms, GPS business with, in support of aviation products. Uh, but on the defense side, I would say, conversely, things remain pretty strong. Maybe we're all waiting for the budgets and what happens with the election next year. But right now, in the, in the domestic markets, as well as the international defense, uh, remains strong. And 5G, um, look, we're just at the beginning of it. Uh, maybe some fits and starts here and there, sub-6 versus millimeter wave. But overall, that's just, that spending continues to drive investment in, in, uh, in uh, new development and mini circuits. We see that flowing through to the test and measurement markets are still reasonably strong. Uh, I think overall, we're gonna have some ups and downs over the next half, and there's some big question marks for 2021, as I said, but look, RF is here to stay. It's been, it's prolific. Uh, they can't get rid of it, and they can't get rid of us. So those of us in this business, I think we have a really strong, secure future. Uh, we'll deal with the bumps as they come, but we've dealt a lot of things over the last six months, and I think we've built a resilience in the business. So 
I'm quite bullish on things for, for, the, for the next uh, coming years. Well, that's a great tagline. They can't get rid of RF and they can't get rid of us. Well, Ted, thank you for joining us today. And we appreciate MiniCircuit sponsoring this episode of Frequency Matters. Stay safe and we hope to see you in person in the not too distant future. Thank you.